What's up everyone? I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to build your own budget kit. Uh, in a game that can be extremely brutal, we're always trying to find that balance between effectiveness and cost. Uh, it can be rough losing hundreds of thousands of rubles and gear every single raid. So we're going to talk about some of the elements that make up a good budget build. Uh, I stream Escape from Tarkov a few days a week and all my links will be down below. I'd absolutely love to have you stop by, hang out, uh, chat it up, ask questions. We also have a Discord where you can ask more questions or even find some people to raid with. Uh, but with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. So as a disclaimer, right off the bat, uh, this is definitely geared more towards newer players to escape from Tarkov. If you are proficient with just about every weapon and you're really looking uh, to min max the price to performance ratio of a kit, um, this video is probably not for you. I will have some videos in the future of specific kits that I like to run, but this is more um, for beginners in escape from Tarkov. The idea for this video really came around uh, a lot of people coming in the chat while I stream on Twitch and just asking, you know, what's the best budget ammo or best budget armor or stuff like that. And uh, so I started to put together some videos of the the budget kits that I like to run and I thought it would be more important to maybe talk first before I do those videos about the elements that make up a budget kit because at the end of the day every single one of us plays Escape from Tarkov differently um, every it, th certain things are more or less important to one of us or the other and that's actually a really really good thing so don't let anybody tell you that you know X kit is the the only budget kit or this is the absolute best you know what I mean? There may be things that perform better from a numbers standpoint, but if you're really good with semi-automatic weapons and not full automatic or vice versa, you know, don't let somebody tell you that you have to run X, Y, or Z. So I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the, just the elements that make up a kit and some things to consider um, and some things that I consider when building a budget kit. So the four main things to consider are obviously going to be uh, the armor that you wear, the weapon, the ammo that you bring, and the meds. Um, and uh, I'm really finding a combination of these things that hits a, a dollar mark that you're looking for. If you're only looking to spend 100,000 rubles or 200,000 or 50,000, um, knowing a few things helps you kind of balance that out because it's really easy to start with, you know, I want class four armor or whatever, and then it, you might not have any room in the budget left for anything else. Uh, so starting with armor, there's a lot of different armors that you can run in the game. So uh, you can go anywhere from level one to level four armor. Now in point 12, level four armor was definitely not really considered budget in the past, um, but with some of the new additions, they absolutely are. So you can get a PACA, which is class two armor. Uh, this is not going to protect much. You know, this is really just there to protect from, you know, buckshot or really low tier pistol rounds from scabs or something like that. Um, once again, you get to decide the value of this. I have had PACA save my life where I, you know, I took a bunch of buckshot to the chest and I would have died, but I've also died plenty of times with, you know, one medium or, you know, top tier bullet because it doesn't protect much. Um, uh, farther up the chain, uh, Ragman at level two, you know, sells this class three armor with a little bit more durability. Uh, this is going to protect a little bit more, but once again, uh, not a whole lot of stock in it. Personally, I kind of find like class three armor to be like, unless you're uh, right out of a wipe and nobody's running great ammo, kind of irrelevant because uh, class two is cheaper and it's just like scav protection. And then class four is going to be way better at stopping bullets from, you know, a lot of PMCs. So that's up to you. Now, the the other thing to note is, you know, this is 42,000 rubles right here. Um, and the one of the new armors that they added with the 0.12 is this 6B5-15. And if you go on the flea market uh, and find these in perfect condition, you can see this is only, you know, six to 8,000 rubles more, these fluctuate between 40 and 50K than that class three armor. This is class four armor and it's an armored rig. Uh, so you don't have to spend money on a rig if you want to bring more magazines. Um, it does have a lower overall durability, you know, than that other class three, which had a 60. But I find this, if you want to run more than like a pack or a class two armor or no armor at all, I found this to be an incredible armor um, because class four can definitely stop some some bullets. You know, obviously we're not talking about top tier stuff, but even just one or two bullets a lot of times gives you the time you need to figure something out. Um, so I would say check the flea market, noodle around in, uh, you know, Ragman level one and two. Um, but the 6B515 is a great kind of top tier for budget. 
Um, the next thing that you're going to consider is what weapon you want to bring. Um, there's a lot of different weapons and this once again comes down to what you like to do. You know, if you want to go sniping, you know, there's the Mosin is a uh, phenomenal. You can get the Mosins for 24,000 rubles, a Mosin infantry, just grab a few rounds and go to town. Um, if you're looking for something that's semi-automatic, the Vepper Hunter, um, uh, chambers a big round. Um, it's got the 762 by 51 round. They hit really hard. You can get these for pretty cheap and it's semi-automatic. Uh, I also really like the ADAR for semi-automatic as well because you can use the um, 5.56 caliber. Uh, you can, you know, 23,000 rubles is really cheap. You don't need huge mags. You don't need a ton of attachments, semi-automatic guns. You know, you don't need to like, you know, kit out for recoil because you can kind of place your shots where you want them. You can throw an optic on and basically be good to go. Uh, if you like fully automatic, the AK-74 um, M and N are both pretty good. You can get an M for 23,000 rubles um, and N, let's see for 35,000 rubles. So anywhere in there and you've got a full auto gun, um, you know, that you are going to be spending more in ammo because you probably need to bring more in if you're going to be mag dumping. But I found when I first started that I really needed, I kind of relied on full auto. I wasn't very accurate. And if somebody was close, I, I wanted to get the extra rounds down range. Um, and I just kind of preferred them. So uh, as a general tip with everything, I would highly suggest checking out the flea market first because you can see all of these AKs are being sold for less than what Propor sells this for. Uh, so with armor, ammo, if you're level five and you can unlock the flea market, you can almost always find these budget things for a little bit cheaper. Another thing to consider when you're piecing together what weapons you want is do you need an optic? Uh, are you okay running iron sights on that specific weapon or do you need an optic or suppression? Uh, if you are a solo player, uh, suppressing your gun can be really helpful in giving you an advantage of your enemy not knowing where you're from or other players not knowing where a firefight was happening. Um, you know, like, you know, if you're running an ADAR and NT4 suppressor, can be, you know, 30,000 rubles, which is, you know, more than you spent on the weapon. Um, and then same thing with optics, you know, a PK-06 from Jaeger sells for about, you know, 16, 5, 16,000 rubles. So those are all things to consider. You know, if, if you're really proficient with a certain type of gun, but you know, you need those attachments, you know, I, I'm not good with the iron sights. I need something and uh, I want it to be suppressed. That's going to inform, you know, maybe the ammo or the rig or the other things that you're purchasing. Um, it all comes down to what you need. There are certain guns that I find myself way more proficient with the iron sights. So if I'm really trying to strip all the way down to as budget as I can go, then maybe I'll choose that weapon for that reason, because I know we don't need anything else. If I have a bunch of optics laying around because I, you know, last night or the night before I did really, really well and I stripped a bunch of things that I know I'll use later, then you can kind of factor that in because you know you already have that so you can spend more money elsewhere. Uh, it's all just coming down to how you play, what you have in your stash and what you're willing to spend on that specific weapon. So with the weapons, it really comes down to what your play style is. I mean, with everything is, but with the weapons, you know, what do you like to shoot? What do you, what do you feel proficient at? Or what are you trying to get more proficient at? There's budget weapons um, in a ton of different calibers, like we've already gone over and a ton of different types of gameplay, sniping, semi-auto, full auto, uh, and you can pick something that fits you and then kind of build your kit around that if you want. Now, the next thing to talk about is ammo. So we just did the video where I talked about how the absolute meta top tier ammo isn't isn't a necessity. It is of course going to be better, but it isn't an absolute necessity. So that is completely up to you. You know, if you're going full auto, the, generally the rule that I go by when I'm doing a budget kit is if I'm doing semi-auto, I'll go cheaper on attachments, cheaper on everything like that, and then use top tier ammo because it really gives you that one tap potential. Top tier or second, you know, to top tier ammo. Um, and then if I'm going full auto, I might drop it down a little bit. So, you know, if I wanted to do an ADAR with, you know, 995, I'm spending, you know, 14 USD around. I might bring a few, two or three mags with 20 rounders in an ADAR and spend a few hundred USD on really nice ammo and try and get those one taps. But if I'm doing a budget AK that I put a few attachments on, you know, I might go with BT because BT is 425 rubles around. So you can basically get three or four rounds of BT per 995 round. Um, 
and you can check the flea market for these as well you know bt a lot of times people find and raid and they sell it so they can be less than what Propor sells them for um but once again that's completely up to you i mean even in the video i did there were a ton of comments of people disagreeing on what they feel the importance of ammo is you can still build a budget kit uh, around ammo if you want you know you can go no armor go semi-automatic go absolute top tier and you're still in that you know hundred thousand ruble range and you can if you're really accurate you can get those one taps and gear up and really be proficient it is totally totally up to you now the final thing is meds now with this kind of is completely up to you i use the hideout a lot to craft meds so i find myself often with a lot of meds on me because i always want to have something churning in the background um so if even if i'm on a budget kit because i'm not you know really paying this is all stuff i already have on me i'll probably bring an ifac or a salua and painkillers even on a budget kit but uh some of the lower tier meds can actually be really effective so a car med kit is just as effective as a Salua or an IFAC. It heals and it uh, stops bleeding, just like the other ones do. It has less overall HP, but it only comes in at 6,000 rubles versus almost 15,000 for a Salua and 21,000 for an IFAC. So if you're looking for something that stops the bleeding and heals, the car med kit for a budget heal is amazing. As well, you can even go cheaper by just getting an, a few AI2s, a bandage, and then a painkiller. So you can heal when you need to heal, bandage when you need to stop a bleed. I find that I don't, I'm not thinking that quickly in. I'm always just going to, you know, spam four because that's where my primary heal is. Uh, so I'll go with a car med kit or some of the meds I already have. But if you can get those binds down and really be thinking that way, you can save even more money by going with the AI2 and the army bandage or a regular bandage. Another way to save money is by not binding your meds at all, but keeping them in your gamma. So you can take something like an ibuprofen and you get 12 uses out of this as a painkiller. It's more expensive as an upfront cost, but if you're not going to be bringing this out here and risking it, you can just keep it down there. And when you need a painkiller, if you've got time, then you can just right click and use that in raid. Now, no, you are going to be sacrificing the time. You can't just click five, be running away while you're taking a painkiller. You kind of have to go in your inventory. So there's always a give and take, but that's a way. So you're not like losing a painkiller every time you go into a raid and spending money on that. You can keep it in there. Uh, splints are definitely something I would recommend bringing, you know, the ALU sprint uh, you can purchase on the flea market, keep that in your uh, container alpha or whatever. And this definitely helps with uh, fractures. If you fall and break your leg or something like that, this can be super helpful. Um, and that's really it. At the end of the day, once again, it comes down to what your play style is. So uh, I'm going to be making some videos in the future of exactly how I like to set up, you know, my budget AK or my budget kits or something like that. Um, but I wanted to do something that was more of like putting the ball in your court and teaching you uh, the, the things to think through when creating a budget kit. I would highly recommend you running a few different things and finding out what you like, because most of the time you'll end up finding something that you are really proficient with, something that you know works well for your play style or even specific kits for specific maps, you know, on a, um, a big open map like woods or something, you might go with the Mosin and you know that you can get this armor, this rig and this, and that's going to come to around a price point that you're comfortable with. So I hope that this helped. I hope that this kind of gave you something to chew on while you're thinking about budget kits and uh, this empowered you to kind of create your own or even take some budget builds that you've seen other players run or other streamers run or something like that and then adapt them to your play style. Uh, in Tarkov, we should really, really celebrate uh, the fact that everybody likes to play this game differently um, and that just about anything in this game can be effective. So find something that works for you, run with it, um, and hopefully this helps you have more fun in Escape from Tarkov and helps uh, ramp up your profits in your raids. Thank you all so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. If you have any questions about this video or if there's any guides you'd like to see me make here in the future, drop a comment down below. Uh, leave a thumbs up on the video if you liked it. That helps me out a lot. And think about subscribing for more content like this. Uh, I am always trying to create content that helps shorten the learning curve of Escape from Tarkov and get you in your raids having fun as soon as possible. Thank you so much again for checking it out, and we will see you all on the next one.